The stock market has been a roller coaster this year, leaving most of us wondering where is the safest place to park our cash while still earning a decent return. Well, that's precisely what we're gonna explore in today's video. With interest rates reaching all-time highs, fixed income assets like treasuries, CDs, and high-yield savings accounts should be on your radar, especially if we're bumping up against a recession. Now, if you haven't considered these investments before, now might be the perfect time to get acquainted because they offer rates anywhere between 4.5 and 6.25% today, and those are guaranteed returns. And of course, there will be skeptics out there who say, but Brian, fixed income assets can't even keep up with inflation. And that used to be the case, but times are starting to change. Inflation is currently below 4% and fixed income assets are actually outperforming that. However, I get what they're saying because the impact on the dollar has already happened and it stings pretty bad. I don't deny that. Now, when you're someone in need of cash for short-term liquidity, you need a safe place to stash your money until you're ready to use it. And here's the new reality. Mortgage rates are at 7.6% today, and they're projected to remain above 5% for potentially a couple of years. This might become our new normal. Here's the plan. I'll dive into the short-term investments of treasuries, CDs, and high-yield savings accounts along with the current rates that are available today. I'll break down their advantages and their disadvantages, and then I'm going to provide you a side-by-side -side comparison. The real-world scenarios for wanting to park your cash could be any one of the following. Saving up for a significant event within the next two years, like renovating your home since nobody can afford to buy a new one. Or preparing for more immediate need like a family trip within the next six to ten months. Or maybe some of you are near retirement seeking a safe and secure investment to ensure your retirement plans aren't derailed with the market fluctuations we see today. This can also be true even if you aren't retiring soon. So let's kick things off by diving into treasuries. These are essentially debt securities offered by the US government, complete with a fixed interest rate and a set maturity date. Think of them as loans extended to Uncle Sam, with the expectation that they're going to repay your principal plus a little bit of extra interest. Treasuries come in three distinct flavors, with the main difference lying in their time to maturity. First, there are bills which cover assets maturing in one year or less. Then there are notes, which fall within the two to 10 year maturity range. And finally, bonds, which take a longer term perspective with maturities of 20 or 30 years. And when it comes to buying these treasuries, you've got two different paths that you can choose from. The first option is to head over to Treasury Direct, which is a government website to buy them brand new. Or you can buy new or used treasuries from a brokerage site like Fidelity. I have dedicated videos that walk through the entire process of buying treasuries, so I'll keep it high level for now. And of course, I'm going to leave a link in the description below to those types of videos that show you exactly how to buy treasuries. Now let's move on to the pros and the cons of treasuries. Treasuries are considered low risk investments because the interest rates are locked in and guaranteed. And the risk of the US government defaulting on their bills? Well, that used to be extremely low, but as of lately, since Congress can't pass the budget, that seems to be a bit in the air. But overall, they're low risk. Next is the tax advantage. You don't have to pay any state or local taxes on the interest earned from treasuries. While federal taxes still apply, this can be a significant advantage if you live in a state with high income taxes. And then there's high liquidity. Treasuries can be sold on the secondary market, providing you with flexibility. However, it's usually easier if you initially purchase them through an exchange rather than Treasury Direct. And when it comes to tax advantaged accounts, you can invest in treasuries through a tax advantage account like a 401k, IRA, or an HSA if you buy them from an exchange or the secondary market. And then there's competitive rates. Treasuries tend to offer higher rates compared to a typical savings account. And the first con is the low interest rates. One of the downsides is that the interest rates on treasuries are generally low. They often lag behind inflation and they can't compete with the potential returns that you can see from the stock market over the long term. And an obvious con is the government shutdown. If the government can't pass the budget, then everything shuts down and interest payments may be delayed. It's truly an unknown that just keeps surfacing over and over. And then there's opportunity cost. If you tie up your money in treasuries, you might miss out on the possibility of higher returns if the interest rates change or if the stock market experiences significant growth. And then there's specific auction windows. New treasuries are sold during specific windows because they're offered at auction. This means that you must align your purchase with these specific timeframes. Next is the secondary market. If you want to sell them early and you bought them from Treasury Direct, you'll need to fill out paperwork to transfer the treasuries to a brokerage site so that they can put them on the secondary market for you. And if you bought them on an exchange, 
You can sell them early on the secondary market where you may need to discount them in order to incentivize others to buy them. Understanding these pros and cons can help you make informed decisions when considering treasuries as part of your investment strategy. And with that, here's a list of some of the treasury yields during the timing of this video. And please keep in mind that these are not taxed at the state or local level. I'll leave a link to a calculator on Treasury Direct, and it's gonna tell you what the impact of the overall rate for not paying state taxes. But when liquidity isn't an issue, you may find markets that offer double-digit returns with lower risk in any climate. Potentially the best of both worlds. How? Well, technology is leveling the playing field, and securitization puts you in a position to maximize returns no matter how the broader market performs. And my long-term subscribers know that fine art is a commodity that sets a new standard. It's a diversifying asset that gives you more growth than gold without the crude oil volatility. And it has a track record spanning centuries of uninterrupted growth, appreciating over 12.5% annually over the last 27 years. And Masterworks is the easiest way to get into fine art. My subscribers have been there to see everyday investors reap the benefits. Over 800,000 people are on the platform and counting, and offerings have sold out within hours. The year is winding down, and some forecasts show that gains might be hard to come by in 2024. So before the other shoe drops, skip the waitlist and consider investing with Masterworks today by clicking in the link in the description below. Now, let's shift our focus over to Certificates of Deposit, also referred to as CDs. These are savings products that share some similarities with treasuries, but there are also some notable differences. In essence, when you opt in for a CD, you're agreeing to invest your money with a bank or a credit union that's insured for a fixed time period. And there was a time when the more that you invested and the longer the duration, the higher the interest rate you'd be receiving from the lending institution. But right now we are in the complete opposite, where shorter maturities carry higher returns, and it's due to the inverted yield curve. Just know that we are operating in very unusual financial times. Now let's dive into the pros and the cons of certificate of deposits. Let's start with safety and guarantees. CDs are a secure and guaranteed investment, with FDIC insurance covering amounts up to $250,000. Overall, your money is well protected. Next is higher rates. CDs typically offer higher interest rates compared to a standard savings account. Next, you can invest in CDs through a tax-advantaged accounts like your 401k, IRA, or HSA, which can also provide you additional financial benefits. And as for the cons, there's gonna be penalties for early withdrawals. If you purchase your CDs from a bank, the penalties for early withdrawals can be quite steep, so make sure and read the fine print. However, if you bought them on an exchange, you have the option to sell them on the secondary market instead. Next, some CDs are callable, meaning that the bank can decide to call in the CD before its maturity date, essentially canceling it and paying it off early at their discretion. Like treasuries, holding onto CDs can lead to an opportunity cost, as your money remains tied up and not invested in a potentially higher and more lucrative stock market. Next, CDs are less liquid than a savings account due to the penalties and the fees associated with an early withdrawal. And one item most people don't think about is most CDs through a bank or a credit union are set up to auto-renew when they mature. This may accidentally lock up your cash longer than you want it to if you don't stay on top of it. One crucial distinction between CDs and treasuries is the hefty penalties that come with selling CDs before their maturity. Unless, of course, you opt for the secondary market or have no penalty CDs that offer a little bit lower rates. On the other hand, Treasuries offer a tax advantage, as they don't incur any state or local income taxes. I believe that understanding these pros and cons will help you make informed choices when considering CDs as part of your financial strategy. Here's a listing of some of the top CD rates that are available today. And I also have a link to several of these with the most up-to-date rates in the description below. I have to say, it is shocking to see them over 6%, but those are with credit unions that you're going to want to verify if you qualify for that rate. Some of them have requirements that you need to physically live in their location, or you need to work for a particular employer. I also list a few of the no penalty CDs where I could find them. When it comes to high interest savings accounts, the real action is truly happening with either online only banks or with credit unions. And if you're accustomed to banking with traditional giants like Wells Fargo or Bank of America, it might be time to rethink your strategy. You may be asking, well, why? It's because these BMS are offering savings account rates that are a mere fraction of what you can be getting elsewhere. Like, I don't know, 100 times less? While Wells Fargo or Bank of America may offer a hip paltry 0.02%, other banks like SoFi are offering 4.5%, or even Ally Bank is offering 4.25%. To put things into perspective, 
Consider this. If you had $10,000 parked in your Wells Fargo account earning 0.02% compared to having it at SoFi earning 4.5%, you'd be losing a whopping $448 a year by sticking with the former. The question you should be asking yourself is, is Wells Fargo providing you with $448 worth of value each year? If the answer is a resounding no, then I think it's high time for you to explore other options. Now, here's the kicker with high yield bank accounts. Their interest rates are quick to react to the Federal Reserve's moves. As we anticipate the Fed making rate cuts in 2024, rest assured that banks will be following suit to lower their rates equally as fast. And when it comes to a high yield savings account, just like the other items, let's break down the pros and the cons. The first obvious pro is the ease of access and necessity. Nearly everyone needs a bank, and choosing the right one can boost your earnings substantially. We're talking 50 to 100 times more than sticking with a traditional brick and mortar bank. And of course, the highest liquidity. High yield savings accounts offer immediate access to your cash without the risk of penalties associated with CDs. You also sidestep the hassle of dealing with secondary markets with CDs or treasuries. Plus, these accounts are insured up to $250,000. The downside is that savings account rates are generally lower compared to other options like CDs or treasuries. But in today's market, that gap is closing all the time. Next is limitations and hoops. Some banks that offer the best rates make it contingent upon having direct deposit, a minimum deposit, or a certain number of debit card transactions each and every month. Alternatively, they may have you jumping through so many hoops that it's just not worth your time. Next is rate fluctuations. The interest rates on high yield savings accounts can change daily and they're subject to fluctuation. This means there is no guarantee that the rate that you have today will be the same one that you have next month. And when the Fed does finally begin to drop rates, it will directly impact your high yield savings account rate because banks will follow suit immediately. With that, I'll follow it up with a listing of some of the top high yield savings accounts that are available today. And it is amazing to see that there's a handful that are over 5%, but some of the more familiar brand name banks are in the mid 4% range, which is obviously better than the big brick and mortar bank rates that most of us are used to. And once again, I do keep a spreadsheet with the most up-to-date rates in the description below, where it is completely free to use and review as you like, where I try to update it every two weeks, and it also has over 25 banks along with all of their details and requirements listed. At the beginning of the video, I mentioned three common groups that are parking their cash, where each of these options from treasuries, CDs, and high yield savings accounts can offer you some refuge for your money. Everyone will have different needs and can use a variety of these options for setting aside their money. And I would love to hear from you in the comments below if you're parking your cash in different ways than what I've listed, or are you putting all your eggs in the stock market? Either way, I wanna know. I hope you find value in me sharing today's best available rates. But if you're at a point where you no longer need to park your cash and you wanna invest it in the market, then I do cover some of the best ETFs and diversified ETFs that are better suited to ride out the recessionary pressures in some of my other videos.